Coming up on News 3 at 6, vinyl fans all over the world and right here in Madison celebrate International Record Store Day. Plus, people are preparing for severe weather before it hits. But first, the perfect day for the farmer's market if construction concerns don't keep people away. This is News 3 at 6. Good evening and welcome to News 3 at 6. I'm Leah Linscheid in for Danica Lewis tonight. A sure sign of spring, the Dane County Farmers Market is back open here in Madison and all that Capitol Square construction didn't seem to keep the crowds away this morning. But what about the rest of the season? News 3's Chris Gothner has the story. The Dane County Farmers Market is a Madison tradition and everyone seems to have their own reason for going. I fail at growing tomatoes. I've tried patio every side, so getting fresh tomatoes without the agony. My husband finally told me after like the fifth summer, he goes, you know you can just go downtown and buy them. I'm like, okay, good idea. I'm a big fan of Stella, so as long as they're here, I'll, I'll keep coming. And when it shows back up on the square every spring, construction doesn't usually come along. On a scale of human suffering, one to ten, I'd give it a three, two and a half. But the cones, dirt, and barricades aren't stopping folks like Wes Garnett from taking in the fun with family. I was really um, uh, nervous about whether or not the construction would, you know, hamper that. But um, to my surprise, it hasn't, and feels just like normal. And for vendors like Rebecca Goodman, business is fabulous today. In spite of all the orange barrels. It was a real interesting setting up this morning with one lane, uh, but uh, it has not impacted the crowds nor my business. So while the construction might be a slight headache. It's going to be a learning curve, and I think we'll all adapt and get used to it. Just have to put up with it. <laughs> you know, roads need to be fixed, so that's the way it is. One thing's for sure, it probably wouldn't be hard for most people to put up with more weather like today's. In Madison, Chris Gothner, WISC News 3. Well, construction along the square is supposed to wrap up by mid-August. In the meantime, though, crews are asking people to park farther away from the market to avoid any traffic problems. Time now to check in with Bob for our first look at the weather. Can we expect a couple more sunny farmers market days, Bob? Well, uh, that's a little bit far up, but we certainly can expect a couple of more very warm days, much like today for tomorrow and Monday. Satellite and radar combination showing those clouds and showers still hanging to the west and not daring to move into the state. Instead, we saw sunshine, a few fair weather cumulus clouds and temperatures like this. 75 in Madison right now. We're at 77 in Wisconsin Dells, Mineral Point, Monroe and Janesville. Basketball still at 81. Janesville and Lone Rock were both over 80 earlier today. Milwaukee still only 60. That lake is still having its way with those lakeshore areas. So this evening we'll see temperatures falling from around 70 into the mid 50s. Again, it's going to be a quick drop in temperature tonight. We should stay a bit milder and we'll see another very warm day for tomorrow. That's your forecast first. All right, thanks, Bob. Well, it's that time of year to start thinking about summer severe weather and how to plan for it. And that's what dozens were doing today at Madison College. The college's Dark Skies event helped people learn roles played by the media, the National Weather Service, and other organizations, all to help others stay safe in severe weather. Those running the event emphasized the importance of having a plan for severe weather before it happens. It's something that you, you have to kind of ingrain in your life that you've always have things ready to go, you know, have your emergency weather kit ready, know when you're going to head into the basement, how it will work, so that it's just natural. When a warning happens, you'll immediately take action. Our very own Gary Canalti, Karen Swanson, and Hattie McLean were also there to help out today. Well, a two-year-old critically injured inside a North Madison apartment this week has died. Police say the girl passed away this morning at four, four days, rather, after officers responded to a medical emergency on the 1700 block of Onsgard Road in Madison. Police are still investigating the circumstances surrounding that death. Well, this week will mark three years since bombings killed three and injured more than 260 at the Boston Marathon. Officers are preparing for the run scheduled for this Monday, and with recent terrorist attacks across the world, they're on high alert. Jeff Begays has more. The ISIS attack in Brussels last month has given Boston Police Commissioner William Evans a lot to think about. It just sort of brought back a lot of uh, emotions over what happened here. We got to stay focused on the race and make sure it goes off safely. 
5,000 uniformed officers from eight cities will join the National Guard, state police, and scores of federal agents from the Secret Service and FBI to secure Monday's marathon route. And they will be directed from this underground emergency command bunker. In this intelligence sharing room, agents monitor online chatter. Well, do you have people on your radar right now that you're checking up on, well, making sure you know where they are before the marathon? Well, yeah, uh, you know, we're working with the FBI. We work with uh, all our partners to make sure, you know, we pay attention to who might be a threat to the marathon. And so, you know, we have our eyes on certain people as far as what their travels might be. There will be 30,000 people running the 26.2-mile route and 1 million spectators along the way. Backpacks have been banned, and so have drones. There are drone detectors to alert authorities. Also, four Massachusetts State Police helicopters will be in the sky, providing surveillance help. This is actually on the infrared camera right now, Jeff. It can scan for people on rooftops and zoom in on suspicious objects like unattended bags. But no amount of preparation will be enough for Commissioner Evans to let down his guard. We have a lot of undercover officers working the crowd. We have bomb sniffing dogs. I'm pretty confident we're going to have a great race. But any marathon, when you cover that amount of distance, unfortunately, um, you can never say the whole route is secure. Evans says there is no specific or credible threat against the marathon, but still it will be all hands on deck staffing here until the last runner crosses that finish line and the crowds here disperse. Jeff Begay's CBS News, Boston. The man behind Star Wars might soon star in a new venture, a museum. Chicago is looking at replacing its Lakeside Center with the George Lucas Museum of Narrative Art. The idea has already got the backing of the Star Wars creator and his wife, both calling the proposal exciting. It gives the city all the benefits that we've talked about, the jobs that will be permanent, the tourism that will come to our city, the hotels and restaurants. All of those are very excited about the prospects of the museum. The museum would include a couple of theaters, a library, and an observation deck, but expect to pay an admission fee to get access to most of those features. Well, today's a good day to dust off those old turntables because it's International Record Store Day. It's a good excuse for businesses to put out hundreds of limited edition products along with sales and other special offers. Here in Madison, though, the day is especially exciting. We have a real community of people that really love music and really love records and love their music and understand the importance of uh, owning a record is like owning a piece of art. It is owning a piece of art and um, that's why we have so many record stores that are so successful in town. Mad City Music is one of those successful stores. It even offered a live concert today for those stopping by to browse for records. Well, there are currently more than 150 films playing here in Madison this week for the 18th annual Wisconsin Film Festival. Moviegoers and filmmakers alike can catch flicks in the venues around the city for the next couple of days. Festival directors say it's a great opportunity for people to experience world-class entertainment right in their backyard. What we offer is what we do every year. It's eight days of movie madness. It's a celebration of international cinema art, movie art, but we don't want to, we know that might sound scary to some people, so we want to remind everyone that the programming team, including myself, believe that the best art is also the best entertainment. The festival runs through Thursday. If you're interested, you can find out more information on their website, wifilmfest.org. Well, still coming up here on News 3 at 6, we'll tell you about a small but significant change coming to NBA uniforms. Stay with us.